All right. Torsten, how are you tonight, my man? It's going to be late, late night for you. Yeah? I went ahead and pushed out the link. Let's see. You know, we got a kind of a late start. Completely forgot about it. What's up, Leo? I don't know if you're feeling good, or able to talk. Shout your co host invite. Ray David, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Keep up that artwork. Push out the uh, little bubble down there in the bottom right. I'm going to push it out in Discord again. Hopefully you guys are enjoying your week. Give it a couple minutes and then we'll get going here. It's kind of a weird week, isn't it? You know, in between holidays, people traveling out of their norms. See if we get a few people in here. Got some interesting things going on in the market today. So we'll touch on a few of those. I don't know if you guys have been uh, investing, watching anything, keeping an eye on things. Are we ready for a breakout or are we ready for a fake out? Love what the market makers do with the market. Yes, when you think we're about to go up, they want to liquidate all the longs. Looks like we had a pretty good flush out the other day. It was a Christmas day, I think. Get back to some of my charts here. Again, hope you guys are having an amazing evening. Go ahead and push out the uh, repost. And we'll uh, get another one scheduled for tomorrow as well. Dolores, pleasure to see you. Hope you're doing well. Isaac, Mr. C's. Hope Vegas is treating you well, my man. If you guys can, as you come in, go ahead and repost the room out. Let's get a few more people in here. Isaac, what's going on, my man? How are you? Hopefully just you had a good Christmas. Just loading the thumbnail in the van again. Uh, we ran over to uh, Ethel M's Chocolate Factory to do a little Christmas uh, tour there. You know, Ooh. With the, with the homeschool. So it should be fun. Nice. Yeah, I think uh, kudos to you, man, for homeschooling. I know it's a, a lot to undertake from a parental standpoint, but, man, with the uh, way schools are today, I think it's by far the best decision that uh, a parent can make, um, really making sure that their kids learn and don't get influenced by all the garbage that's in school today. Oh, absolutely. So, no, it, it's, it is my top investment i am going to put it down this is my biggest and most important investment not, not that in crypto and stuff is important but this is my top investment into my children and my family so yeah no i hear that well it's going to be a big weekend for you guys in vegas this weekend man with the new year i know um, one of my buddies is flying out there today to vegas he usually spends every new year's eve out there in vegas um goes out there and has a good time so I know you guys do it up well out there in Vegas, my man. Oh yeah, I mean, of course you're. I mean, uh, I mean, personally, I, I'll probably be steering clear of the 
fun slash craziness of the strip. Um, but I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll probably be in view of, of being able to see the fireworks, and enjoy that aspect without being arrested or, or shot at or trampled or you know, <laughs> any good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Sam, I shot you a speaker invite. Hope you're doing well, my man. Yum. Yum. That's all I heard. Yum. <laughs> all right. We'll get into some market stuff. Where'd you go, Sam? I guess he didn't like being up on the speaker panel. I still see him up here. Do you? Maybe he's chewing. I don't know. Twitter be <laughs> acting funny or X, whatever it is. I got kicked off. You got kicked off? I'm back, though. Good, 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 good. How are you, Sam? Do you have a good holiday? I feel like I haven't seen you uh, much the, the last, like, week. Yeah, it's been busy between wrapping up with work and then family stuff and just all around catching up on errands. So just finally coming to a slow down period. Yeah. Finally. Does this nor does it normally slow down for you this time of year with work? Uh yeah. Like we're it depends. The first two weeks of December are normally really busy and then I'm catching up on errands after that and then after I, all that's caught up it's normally pretty pretty chill nice so uh i don't know how much you watch the market at all um i just kind of threw a title up there breakout or fake out for today um just because of what's kind of going on in the market um when we look at what's going on uh we got eth looking pretty juicy right now bitcoin's been um holding in a kind of a accumulation phase, right? But ETH is actually looking like it wants to actually break out. Um, so we'll see what happens. So we got Bitcoin trading at 43,500 roughly. ETH is around 2390. Litecoin 76, Doge at 9 cents and Cadena $1.44 now. Man, this thing has had, it's been a beast in the last, what, week or so? Let me see, uh, taking a look at the chart here for Cadena. Jesus Christ. What, since the 23rd of December? Yeah, it's up about 86%. That's crazy. Nice little uh, chunk there. And for those of us that are currently in Xeno Mining, um, that's good news for us because all that Cadena that we've been mining... Uh, we'll have a nice little payout now. Yeah. Right? It's a Christmas present. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Looking at our next payment coming up on what date, Torsten? Uh, January the 1st. First New Year's. Woo Hold back that excitement, man. Don't be too excited now. Yeah, Hold it's it back. just a few more days, <laughs> my man. Yeah. A few more days. So Sam, have you been uh, have you been buying any uh, NFTs, uh, crypto lately, with some of these prices at where they're at, or are you kind of sitting back? Me personally, I haven't been buying any NFTs. Um, I'm not very bullish on NFTs for the next bull run, but I have been looking at some different cryptos and stuff. Mainly just been waiting some for some more liquidity to come back in my pocket before I buy stuff. So right now I've just <laughs> been just been watching. Oh, I think we all know the pain of that with uh, some trade AI. Mm. Yeah, still sitting on uh, uh, waiting a little bit of mine to come back as well. Um, I know that's been one of my big hiccups, but thankfully I have had a little bit of. Uh, liquidity. I've been able to kind of just pick and choose, cherry pick a, a couple of the ones that I don't mind getting some small caps, you know, holding them for the long, um, the long haul, 
you know, especially with uh, things turning around in the market, looking overall bullish for the most part. Um, I've been uh, buying some as they've been uh, looking to make their uh, transition into more of a bullish nature. Uh, so I'm excited about that. I'll hold them long term. Should be able to turn a nice little profit um, if they all like 10x from where I'm entering in at. So that'll be nice. Yeah, I put a little balance in shrapnel in when was it mid November? So that's around 5x so far. But I expected to go a little higher, so I staked it for 90 days at 20% APR. APY, sorry. Yeah, I don't even think we can get that here in the U.S. I think we have to use a, a VPN if we want to be able to uh, acquire any of that. So yeah, I mean, it would, there's a there's a deal on on Bybit. I think it's even still accessible. I mean, yeah. If you want to look into Ooh, it, I might have yeah. I mean, uh, obviously, it was much better to to buy it like six weeks ago. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I've been looking at that six weeks ago would have been uh, obviously the optimal time to have been buying into some of these because they've already gone up, you know, 20, 30, 40 percent. Mm -hmm. But um, even if you watch them, some of them are still at relatively good prices for entries um, based on their accumulation. So I think we're good. Yeah, I'm more excited about seeing uh, Kadena go up, um, seeing our rewards come back from the 42 miners that we have online. Get that, uh, get that in my pocket, um, and see where we go. Because I don't think, I don't think Kadena is done. Um, Doge hasn't really made a run, um, and Litecoin either. So I think we're good. I think we still have some some room to go on those um but i do i do expect to see ETH do some pop a lot of the other various cryptos have been popping off um so if you've been watching them uh there's been some very good ones i think i'm up you know at, at least 25 to 40 percent on some of them mm -hmm. already which is dope um so i'm going to be looking to obviously take some profits on some of these um roll some of those profits over into some other cryptos that have not quite made their move yet so that I can continue to expand on that. Um, I'm, I'm looking to take about 1K to 10K in the next 6 to 10 months. That's my goal. Just from some of the uh, small stuff that I've been purchasing. So... It's kind of where I'm at on that. Do you, uh, Tor Torsten, you have like a an investment thesis that you're kind of following or anything? Um, honestly, um, I just try to play by ear and grab some of the opportunities that are yeah run into. Like, um, for example, one of the things I invested in lately was also in November, I think. Like I. I was able to to put some funds into a VC deal for a note for of the grid. Um, that's an upcoming game. It has a, has tons of potential, and yeah, we um, we put some funds together, some some German folks and I, and we bought an Epic note. So that's already been it's already online. So let's see how that plays out. Now to run that node, are you running it off of a cloud server? Um, honestly, I don't know because uh, I just I just get my rewards every two to four weeks when uh, when the game comes out. Nice. So I know that there's been some discussion because sometimes I know some guys are in, in, you know investing into individual games. Because Shrapnel is an individual game, yes. correct? It's not part of an ecosystem, yeah. right? That's why I opted to go with uh, Gala, just because it's you know more of an ecosystem token. So rather than try to pick a winner from a 
you know, an individual game or, or ecosystem. I just chose the ecosystem token overall. Um, yeah, but the node we invested in, it will also most likely be um, be workable for like future games. It's just that off the grid's the first one. Copy that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, they have a have a have a really nice team. I mean, there's a they have some people who've worked on on big ass projects for Rockstar Games and Ubisoft and and shit like that. And one of the advisors is uh, Neil Blomkamp. That's the director of of uh, District Nine, Elysium, and a couple of other movies. Okay, so they got some big hitters on the team. Yeah, there, and funny thing is, uh, they uh, they were originally like a Ukraine company, and their headquarters is in Frankfurt now. So I, 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 funny thing is, I walked by that building earlier when my my brother, my niece, and I we went to the playground. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's a little different when you can actually see tangible places like yeah. that, right? You yeah, kind of I mean, put, I knew the building, but I, I, I just didn't know that that Godzilla Games was in that building. So nice. Yeah. I don't think Gary's uh, Gary's investing in many tokens. I think he's just been buying NFTs. I, I think uh, I know Sam. You weren't saying you were saying that you weren't really interested in NFTs. Any any gaming NFTs that come to mind at all? Or are you pretty much steering clear of just utility and just staying with utility ones? Obviously, you know, with what we have going on with Zeno, that's ongoing rewards, so that's a no brainer for us. But um, for me, it's um, for me, it's more so just focusing on ones with utility. There's a couple of gaming ones that I'm already invested in, but there's not very many gaming ones that I feel are legitimately doing it the right way. So I kind of stay clear of a lot of those. Some of them are just like they don't even need an NFT. They just have an NFT for basically no reason. And um, just like why, so it, it just, and, and some of them are boring and they're not even worth it. And their DeFi is crap. They don't <laughs> have enough liquidity, and it's just, it's just you know worthless junk, almost as worthless as buying NFTs with for just for digital art. But uh, it really just depends for me. Right now, I've just been kind of staying clear of NFTs in total. Because a lot of them lie about what they're building anyway. Like, they even as legit as they look, even if their utility is supposedly real, um, it's just, there's not very many that end up actually being truthful. So I've just been staying clear of them in general. Yeah, I can see, you know, I think it's uh, the industry has hurt itself with bad actors, you know, with people saying they're going to do things, they don't do it. I mean, you know, even even some people who have some business sense, I've I've got some in of their NFTs, and the price is just tanked, and I, it's sad. I just I got a bunch of them in my wallet, and I wish I could, you know, take my liquidity back out of it. But I don't. I would be taking a huge loss. I'm not even sure it's, you know, worth it. Although I could convert that over to something else, you know, which would be nice. But man, I'd be taking a fucking big loss yeah. but oh yeah 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 I, so what do you think the market is gonna is gonna do this time around you think it's you know with the dwindling nft space you think uh um you're gonna see any type of resurgence from this bull market with it no not really i think it's want to be more tech focused and more uh focused on actual uh, mass adoption this go around just because of the way things are positioned with like BlackRock and uh, different major blue chip companies coming into the game. So I think we're going to see more of it. And also with the Ripple lawsuit being one, I feel like it's going to be more focused on tech and innovation than it will be bullshit um, NFTs, to be honest. I could see that. Yeah, I could see some. So I could see NFTs coming back to a certain degree, but. Only if they're utility based, so they they back with reward assets. 
yeah, I think that's going to be the next big narrative that, you know, as, I mean, I, I think we'll see a little bump in NFTs just as you know, maybe some new retail folks start to come into the space um, and get drawn in by some of the FOMO and the hype. Um, but I, I hope that, I, I guess I would like to see more of that be a little bit more educated in their investment thesis, right? You know, and, and look for projects, you know, like ours at Xeno Mining that's, you know, doxed, uh, utility-based, you know, real-world assets behind your purchase, um, you know, especially for the long. And I think that that ties in beautifully because, Sam, you were talking about the narrative with BlackRock. Um, the, the big narrative right now is obviously the ETFs coming in. Um, I've seen some interesting calls um, on those uh, ETFs that it, it could be very soon, possibly the very beginning of January, but um, who knows? Um, but I did see an interesting article the other day that was talking about how BlackRock is invested in, uh, I think it was like four out of the five major Bitcoin mining companies uh, traded on the stock exchange. So I think as much as people, you know, like to, you know, give Bitcoin a hard time and and I don't think they would be investing in that. Um, hey, Thorsten, your mic is giving some feedback. Go okay, ahead. sorry. Yeah. Um, it's uh, interesting that BlackRock would be so well positioned in all those mining companies that I don't think that Bitcoin mining is going to go anywhere uh, just due to the amount of uh, money that's going to be flowing into this. But I know, Sam, you're really good with um, some of the the economics behind some of these things. And I heard um, some folks talking on another podcast that I found fairly interesting that as much as we would like to see liquidity flow in to the crypto space from these ETFs, that the ETF itself really isn't a positive thing for Bitcoin and the original purpose that Bitcoin was designed to create decentralization. Are you familiar with kind of these aspects of, you know, what it what it would be mean to have an ETF approved? And anybody else that's down in the audience, if you got any insight to, you know, that uh, about this as well. I'd love to have some conversation with you about it because I, I will. I'm not the strongest in economics. I just found it kind of eye opening when I heard them talking about the ETF actually not being a good thing uh, in regard to uh, the crypto space. So, Sam, what do you think on that? Sorry, I was in the middle of something. Can you can, can you go through that one more time? I apologize. Um, so to kind of give you guys some context. The, the ETF approval from what they were talking about would actually allow them to centralize Bitcoin more than what it is now with the purpose of Bitcoin actually being a dis decentralized finance mechanism that the ETF would actually centralize it some more. Are you familiar with that at all, Sam? Oh, yeah, like the dot of ETFs bringing, making Bitcoin centralized. Mm -hmm. um, I feel I, the ETF itself is a centralized component of it, but it won't make Bitcoin as a whole centralized. Uh, they can try, uh, they're going to do their best to try, but as long as there's like paper wallets and stuff that exists, um, Bitcoin's always going to be a decentralized ledger. So. Um, I think they'll try, but I don't think they're going to be very successful in it. Yeah, I, I I don't think I fully understand the economics behind it. Although, you know, their their statement was kind of around um, that in order for the ETF to trade, they would actually have to have real Bitcoin, and in order to do that, they would have to suck the liquidity from the exchanges. Yeah. And if they did that, then that would pull it all into a more centralized fashion where they could control it. Um, Thorsten, if you got some input on that, yeah, I'm great. It'd be great to I'm not sure if you—that's what you're talking about. But 
wasn't it the one of the founders of Mac, Maxi who said that uh, well if if the ETFs are approved then they have to back it back those ETFs with real bitcoin so they have to buy bitcoin and they essentially have to take it out of basically of the network so the net the the trading volume and the action on the on the bitcoin network would go down that would be a bad aspect for bitcoin um also for the mining so yeah because uh yeah because if if less transactions then uh yeah it's not uh, not as much mining and validation to do so i think that what would that do to the uh trading supply then would that actually decrease the supply and drive up the price then that's a good question i mean if there's not any liquidity on the exchanges to be able to be well less of it anyway Ooh, here we go ethereum just crossed 2400 it's got a notification on my phone so i think that's uh i think there's some room for ethereum to run but anyway back to uh sorry to get distracted there but yeah i think that's uh, an interesting factor I, I, it'd be interesting to see uh you know how that impacts so i uh, it'd be curious then if if the ETS were approved and and potentially that would pull more bitcoin off the network and there not be as many transactions why would blackrock then turn around and have ownership in so many different mining companies unless they just want to use it to continue to just reel it all in essentially right so if they can monopolize the mining aspect of it and through the etf suck up all the liquidity for bitcoin they could really centralize it couldn't they thoughts so, i don't think so um i feel like it can still mess with the price of it and the economics of it but um still at the end of the day but bitcoin is what it is they they can't control it yeah uh, uh, yeah i i'm not uh i will say that i'm not the best economist to kind of fully understand that big picture they think these are all things that we're all learning along the way um so it'll be very interesting um even if the price of bitcoin continues to go up i think ha having uh as much of it in your in our pockets as possible especially with the mining aspect because we get it at such a cheaper price than what spot is that it still ends up being um a positive thing even for the mining aspect i, I could be wrong but I don't know if Aaron is down there, uh, can come up and might be able to speak on that aspect at all. I did shoot him a, a speaker um, invite to come up. Um, he might know more of that aspect of it. I mean, it's in their best interest to keep it decentralized because that's how Bitcoin gets its value anyway. So the more people that use it and participate in the decentralization of crypto the more value that goes up it's like you know supply and demand so uh, if anything um they'd be doing themselves a disservice if they try to take that out of it unless the plan is to bring it down well uh, yeah who knows yeah um i know there's been some pretty high price targets but yeah again uh, not knowing the full economic impact of it i think it'll be uh it'll be pretty interesting but i think um at this point in time in in the market overall um we got if you look at the the way the market is going in transition right now uh bitcoin dominance has has dropped uh we're now seeing some of the alts start to catch up um so guys if you're if you looking at some of your altcoin options um be very careful in some of your your altcoin options some of them have already began to run um they will probably not find good entries on them 
uh, to some degree. So you might have to do a little digging into some of them if you have not been accumulating during the uh, bear market um, and getting your positions DCA'd into uh, to take advantage of it. Um, we're now seeing Ethereum now start to run. Uh, what do you guys think about some of the other Ethereum-based tokens? Do you think that with the rise in ETH that um, you think you'll see anybody jump ship from Solana and start uh, pulling profits from Solana and dropping it in ETH? as ETH starts to run, or do you think uh, we're going to see a nice little competition between Sol, Lana, and ETH right now? What do you guys think? I don't, know, I don't see that happening. I think Solana is going to stay Solana. Um, I honestly am not... I, I honestly think Ethereum's going to get replaced at some point. Uh, I think it's like a good experiment, but I honestly don't think it's going to be the grand ruler of um you know smart contract based blockchains of the future to be honest um yeah this will be interesting i i recently found out about another project called metis a blockchain and man it is just skyrocketed and uh, i'm still learning about it but it's it's done some crazy gains recently and i'd never even heard of it it's amazing to me how many different blockchains there actually are out there and i guess my question you know would be my concern would be how saturated can this market become with all these different blockchains is there enough liquidity to come in to to really drive all these different cryptos up or with say regulation coming in some uh better clarity potentially is it really going to make a difference when we start adding in trade fi um uh like uh, 401ks and um retirement pension plans and things like that once they start rolling into the market is it going to really matter at that point because we're talking billions on billions of dollars flooding in at that point um at what point do we have just too many different blockchains? Are they really all solving a problem or are we gonna see some of them actually just uh, get wiped out as regulation comes in uh, and utility doesn't prove to be purposeful? What do you think, Sam or Torsen? Yeah, I guess as with everything, there will be some sort of consolidation because he, you don't, I'm not sure if you need like a zillion blockchains, especially if if a lot of them they either don't do don't really do anything at all or they, they do a lot of the same. So I guess then we'll see some so that some some of them they would just fall apart or be abandoned, and some of them they might just you know probably merge in some shape or form. I mean. Um, you already have solutions that allows you to to interoperate between those different blockchains, Polkadot, for instance. So yeah, I could see see some of that happening. Yeah, does does Polkadot have smart contract features to it? Yeah, I think so, and it, it allows you to um, to yeah connect it to other blockchains. So basically, you can dock other blockchains onto Polkadot, and then Polkadot serves as the man in the middle to, allowing those those different blockchains to to interact with, with each other that's the value okay i'm not real familiar with polka dot so is it almost like maybe say like a quant where it acts like a middleman bridge kind of uh to allow some of the different chains to be able to speak to each other yeah i guess to a degree okay yeah, I, do, I just don't know much about that ecosystem at all. And I really don't hear much about Polkadot um, in the mainstream, you know? Yeah, but the funny thing is that it's, it's always been like one of the 15 biggest uh, coins in the market, coins or tokens, in terms of, uh, of just, you know, uh, in terms of liquidity. Our trading volume has always been like in the top, maybe top 10, sometimes top 10, usually top 15. 
And uh, Polkadot's also gone up like higher percent in the last four weeks or so. Okay. Yeah, I just don't have that one on my radar because I really don't. Yeah, no, no. When, when, when I was in Morocco, I actually bought like a little bit more for how much was it? Like 50 euros or so. Nothing, nothing big. And it's already pretty much doubled, I guess, or almost doubled since. Interesting. So then kind of going back to what Sam was saying with Ethereum, Sam, do you, with Ethereum be kind of being deeply rooted within like, you know, uh, JB Morgan Chase and those guys, do you, do you think that Ethereum is really going to go anywhere? Do you, or do you think it's going to just kind of remain the base and all the layer ones and layer twos are really going to just take over? Um, I mean, I think it still has some good potential for at least, you know, another maybe 10 years, but I think it will eventually get replaced by something better because Ethereum has a lot of flaws, like a lot of flaws. I mean, and, like uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, I just, I, I don't, I don't see it being the long-term solution for, uh, what we use for everything i just don't um like i like ethereum because it was you know basically the forefront and the first to create um smart contract capabilities within the blockchain and kind of gave a standard basis for kind of where we could take the internet but uh just like um you know internet explorer or um what was the other one? Netscape. Netscape. <laughs> you know, uh, those are really big, but eventually they were replaced by um, better browsers and better ways to access the internet. And I kind of think the same thing is going to happen with Ethereum. Okay, so uh, so do you think they were replaced by better browsers, or do you think they were just crushed by Microsoft in their business practices? <laughs> <laughs> I think they were they were passed by the people who were willing to put in uh, more work to make the um, the interaction more user friendly. Sure, I could see that. Yeah, and I think that's a you know I guess that's you know something we, that we're we're coming across too is like looking for. Um, it, you know, making some aesthetic changes and things like that to our UI interface so that our community can see more things that's going on. All right, that's all the process of building and and listening to what the the consumer aspect of it. Um, not only that, from our own personal use and looking at what kinds of things do I even want to see as a user of the interface. Uh, what kind of information I want to have. Um, and, and not only that, then obviously looking at what your uh, competitors are doing or so-called competitors or at least people in the same ecosphere, you know, what kinds of things are they doing and, and features do you like and, and not like about what they have. Um, so I think that's all important things to to consider as you continue to build, right? And that's, you know, essentially what we've been doing is, is continuing the process um, and we will continue that process even more as we get along. So uh, I'm super excited about that aspect of it. Um, uh, I know that uh, the the XRP collection is now, uh, the art is done from my understanding. The traits are being collated. Um, and as soon as we have all that fine-tuned and able to upload then uh looks like hopefully uh in january we will be looking to launch this xrp collection that we have now um so speaking of smart contracts you know the xrp itself doesn't have a smart contract platform um that's where root network comes in to kind of solve that aspect of it i know futureverse over there root network has been doing some amazing things building on that um but it is you just can't ignore the xrp community it's so huge um i was listening to a podcast today and just all the exciting stuff that's coming along with xrp if you guys do not have 
your XRP yet. Uh, I wouldn't wait too long um, because you, you, XRP has been going through this long consolidation phase. We've been right in this, what, 60 to 64 cent range now for how many days? It seems something like 40, 40 days at least in this range. If I look at the the chart, we've been stuck here for how long? I'm going to measure it real quick. Yeah, about 16 days in this range. With the high of 69, we had a little pop, but yeah, we've been going sideways in this range for minus that one little pop, about 41 days. All right, so nice long consolidation. And when XRP likes to move, if you look at the chart, it, it moves quick. Um, so if you don't have your positions in there, um, be ready. Uh, we will be launching our XRP collection. The Stay tuned for the announcements on that. We will be doing, um, I believe, some sneak peeks drops here as well. You guys are going to love the artwork. It's freaking absolutely fire. Um, some of the team that have been working on it inside of Dogface Labs absolutely just crushed it with the art. So uh, super excited to that. Uh, again, the revenue will be going back into additional miners so we can increase our mining pool as we uh, build out the facilities as well uh, for immersion mining. And it will be off and running. Uh, at that point, we'll be able to uh, even dunk our machines get them nice and wet, just like we like them, and uh, get some more production out of them. So um, we're excited about that. You know, that's the thing is, is like Sam and I were talking about earlier, just with utility, real world asset projects, um, guys, we're, we have delivered, we're continuing to deliver, and we're not even only doing that, we're expanding. And the things that uh, the exec team in the background has been working on that, will project us uh, ahead even further um, is some good stuff. So we've been reluctant to share anything until things are signed, T's are crossed, I's are dotted kind of thing. Um, but we are chomping at the bit to kind of get some of that news out to you guys. But we just want to make sure everything is in place before we go and release any of that. So, so stay tuned for that. You will want to have your XRP ready. Um, I believe we're going to do it a little differently where, um, so stay tuned for the mint details, um, of it. So it'll be exciting to see. You'll actually have a choice, um, by first come first serve, uh, once we release it and you'll be able to pick the NFTs that you want. So we're going to do this a little different. Um, so stay tuned for more details to come on that. Um, anything else going on in the market, Thorsten, that, uh, you've seen going on any kind of news recently, um, that has you excited, has you concerned, anything like that, that we can discuss. Uh, and I'll pose that same question to Sam as well. I don't have much. Really. Um, I think we pretty much covered the highlights for this week. Yeah. I mean, it was. It was a week with a bunch of holidays, so not much happening, I guess, in that regard. Um, yes, yes and no. It kind of feels that way. But if you, you know, like I've been paying attention to the market, there's been a lot of volatility in the market. And and uh, that's when they like to sneak things in, too, man. You know, when people are occupied, uh, not paying attention to the markets, that's when they like to do things as well. So... All right, let's see here. I want to take a quick peek at Coin Telegraph. What's been going on in the news? See if there's anything I might have missed. What are your thoughts on ordinals? We haven't really touched on the ordinals tonight. 
Sam or Thorsten, uh, I don't really follow too much with ordinals per se myself. Um, uh, or any of the BRC tokens. Have you guys seen anything in the news lately that uh, is is happening over there uh, as far as the ordinals or BRC chain, as far as like any tokens on that? Um, wasn't the ordinals token listed on Binance last month? I mean, is Binance going to be around in another few weeks or a month or so? I know I've heard some you know, concerning things, but I, I don't know. I, don't, I I pulled all my funds from Binance. Yeah, I only have like, a, I think a little in there, but I could just take it out and I would be good to go. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really trust most of the exchanges really. So yeah, I just don't leave your, your large balances in there. Um, no, it was just, uh, but, uh, but Ordinals was, I mean, it wasn't just Binance, but it was a couple of other exchanges. I think crypto.com as well, maybe some more. Yeah. Honestly, right now it seems to be Solana shitcoin season again. If you, if you um, go through those, all those Twitter posts. Yeah, yeah, crypto yeah. Twitter. Yeah, all these, all these meme coins, man. I just, I, I know that I, I, I did see it. Somebody had, you know, uh, turned like, uh, I think maybe it was like a, like five hundred dollar investment into like two yeah. million. I just, I, I, I know what can happen. I just don't think that I have the stomach to play that game. Maybe a, maybe a small venture capital of sticking, you know, 50 bucks into it and just seeing what it does, you know. But, you know, with, without having some type of utility to it, I just think you're you're really gambling at that point, right? I mean, it's already speculative enough um, of a market now that it's it is turning more to – actual utility now with a lot of these problem solving um cryptocurrencies but i just don't know that i could stomach uh throwing something into uh i'd rather put that 50 bucks into xrp or you know something else that i know is going to be around um no matter whether the market goes up or down uh and i don't have to worry about stressing about trying to figure out when to take profits or watch it go to completely zero because it's a you know the shit coin got rubbed um I know there's a few of them that are like that, but I just don't have the stomach for it. I just don't think I want to do that myself. I do see. I, I do. <laughs> What's that, Sam? I said I don't trade shit coins. <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna gamble on the forex market. Yeah, something that has. Uh, um, definitely has some more utility to it. Thorsten, I tried to add you back uh, since you requested to speak, but it's, let's see if it'll let me. It may not let me. Gave me an error. Oh, there we go. Um, but I do see a title that uh, does strike a chord. MicroStrategy stock surges 350% in 2023 on the back of a Bitcoin ETF hype. There we go. Back to back to that ETF stuff. So, uh, didn't Coinbase Sam didn't it go up like something like three hundred percent or something recently too? Coinbase stock. Uh, I am not sure. I haven't paid any attention to to um, stocks lately. To be honest, I, I will tell you it's 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 a lot of work to try to keep up to date with all this stuff going on, especially when you're you know in the background building um especially with a project as big as ours you know so it's been you know it's tough to spend that time kind of digging in and uh there's a couple people that uh, i do tend to follow to try to get some crypto news but man it's it's like having another full-time job Thorsten, it won't let me add you back up it keeps giving me an error but i think we're gonna go ahead and uh if there's not anything oh there it goes now it worked Yeah, looks like it. Yep. Yeah, I didn't know if uh, you had anything to add to that conversation, if you were to hear what I was just kind of speaking about with some of the stocks revolving around MicroStrategy and Coinbase themselves. 
Yeah, I mean, I hold a couple of Coinbase shares that are bought for like less than a third of where where they are at right now. So yeah, of course that that peaks my interest if that goes up. I don't hold micro strategy, but yeah, I hold a little Coinbase. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I I think that to have a diversified portfolio, you know, around some of these different ones, uh, even the stocks in it. But I, I don't know. Are we going to see and are we seeing an overinflated stock market? And we're going to see uh, a major, you know, uh, drawdown in the beginning of twenty twenty four in the first quarter. Yeah, uh, that's what, what some of the experts are predicting. But uh, I mean, it's really hard because. Honestly, there wasn't a real reason why those stocks have been ballooning in the last couple of months, but they've nothing but gone up. I mean, it was it was crazy that that last quarter, really. Um, yeah. So who knows? I mean, yeah, kind of hard to say. I might they should be due to do for some correction, but yeah, who knows? It's a it's a weird time, I guess. Just a weird time in the market, at least in the stock market. I agree. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this uh, this episode of Crypto Crossfire. Um, I will get another one scheduled for tomorrow. We'll bring some more market updates and see what's going on, especially with all the volatility going on inside the market. So if you're paying attention, uh, do your due diligence. Make sure you're watching your entries. Um and as always, do not be afraid to take profits when the time comes uh, because you don't know when the market's going to come and pull back. Uh, again, you can do uh, really good on TA uh, if you're a TA type person, um, which I tend to do uh, looking at the charts and kind of watching and looking at my entries. Uh, but you do not know what the market makers are going to do. And when it's time for them to uh, uh, go after some liquidity, they by all means will do it and uh, and take it from you. So if you have some, uh, if you're in profits, it's always good to at least take that initial back out um, and sit on house money from there at least. Uh, so that way you know you got your initial investment back. So, um, and again, be smart. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys to everybody who tuned in this evening. Appreciate you guys coming up and talking, Sam and Thorsten and Mr. C's. Hope you guys have a great night. Be safe out there. Spend some time with the family. And uh, we'll see you again uh, back tomorrow for episode 23 of Crypto Crossfire. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Have a good night, G.